everyone, welcome to XSTEM All Access. I'm Tamara Robertson, and I'm excited to be a part of this series, showcasing some of the coolest minds in STEM. In this series, we'll dive deep into the diverse world of STEM careers and the individuals leading the way in science, technology, engineering, and math. As your guest host for this episode, I'm excited to chat with Captain Ariel Nepper. She is an F-35 pilot in the U.S. Air Force, I'm going to ask her all the questions you'd like to know about her job, like what it's like to pilot an aircraft that can travel 1,200 miles per hour. Make sure you subscribe in the YouTube description below and follow us on social media to get updates on new XM episodes. Check out the full library of episodes available on demand right here. You'll find topics ranging from aerospace engineering to conservation, robotics to life-saving science, and everything in between. Plus, educators can access NGSS and Castle Align lesson plans to accompany each episode, including today's. These lesson plans are written by educators for educators. With your parents' permission, tell us how you were inspired today by tagging us at USA Science Fest, hashtag XSTEM, and of course, at The Real Tamara Robertson. Before we begin, please join me in thanking our partners, the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Space Force for making this XM series possible. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Most people know me as a Mythbuster, but long before that, I became a chemical and biomolecular engineer, enabling me to do relief work all around the world while helping companies design more sustainable plastics and pandemic vaccines. Yet even longer before that, I was born the child to two military parents who worked in avionics for the Marine Corps, keeping pilots like today's speaker safe. With that, I hope you are as excited as I am to hear from today's speaker, Captain Ariel Nepper. If you've ever been a passenger on a commercial aircraft, you've probably flown at speeds around 550 miles per hour. That's pretty fast, right? Imagine piloting an aircraft at more than double that speed. Today's speaker has the exciting job of doing just that. She flies the F-35 fighter jet for the U.S. Air Force. Captain Nepper, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tamara. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to talk to you all. I know the audience is excited to hear from you, so let's jump right into our first question. You earned your bachelor's degree in biology before becoming an Air Force pilot. What inspired you to shift paths from the life sciences into aviation and ultimately join the Air Force? So what inspired me to ultimately shift from a biology degree to an Air Force career? Well, it was actually not entirely a shift. Uh, I was able to do both. So coming out of high school, I applied for and received an ROTC scholarship, which, which covered four years of tuition. Uh, my college tuition. And in the contract specifically, it stated that I could study whatever I wanted. So I've always had a passion for biology, especially marine biology growing up in San Diego. I love playing in the ocean. And so that was a passion I was interested in pursuing while at the same time having my college career paid for. What inspired me to pick an aviation path versus staying in the biology path was there were a lot of people around me that actually inspired me and to push myself to go for a pilot. Uh, you have to apply for a pilot slot. And so I figured, why not? It sounds really cool. They have uh, really good opportunities with the actual pilot program, both during and after the Air Force. So I was pushed to go that route and applied, and then the rest was kind of history. So. I was able to do both while also having my college career paid for. How great that the Air Force ROTC enabled you to not only cover the cost of your college education, but to pursue both of your passions in aviation and biology. If you're not familiar with the ROTC, you can learn more here. Speaking of your passion for aviation, you fly the F-35 fighter jet, which is an extremely powerful aircraft that reaches speeds of Mach 1.6 or 1,200 miles per hour. These are speeds that most of us can only imagine traveling at. Can you tell us what it feels like flying in an aircraft that fast? Flying an F-35 jet is an experience like no other. It feels like you're strapped to a rocket ship 
and you're going for outer space. Honestly, it's one of the coolest experiences as you're taking off in max afterburner, your body is pushed back into the seat and you can experience G-forces of up to five to seven. In comparison, it's like on a typical looping roller coaster, roller coasters only can get up to two to three Gs total. So imagine doubling that. Uh, also, something to compare it to is if you were to drive to the store, that trip takes you 10 minutes in a car, that would only take you 30 seconds in a fighter jet. So it's a really cool experience. Gravity almost doesn't apply to you. Sometimes the ground is above me and the sky is below me as I'm turning my jet all throughout the sky. Uh, it's an amazing experience and one that I'm lucky to have. Wow, that really is an experience like no other. Roller coasters are probably the closest most of us will come to experiencing just a fraction of that speed. But even on the fastest roller coasters, we are just passengers along for the ride. Let's not overlook that you are actually in control of the aircraft at these incredible speeds. That's so impressive. If you love the thrill of roller coasters, maybe a career as an Air Force pilot is for you. Now, being a fighter jet pilot is a really cool job, but I imagine you don't spend all of your time in the air. What does a typical workday look like for you? So a typical workday actually looks like a lot of studying and preparation for all my flights. Studying, I know, boring. But honestly, it's not that boring because what we're studying is really cool. It's everything to do, anything and everything to do with flying. So anything that can help us advance tactically for operational missions. We do a ton of different types of missions in the F-35. So it's, it's honestly studying that you want to do, and it's something that's crucial in order to maintain the edge and be a professional aviator in the Air Force. Um, also, besides the flying aspect, uh, a typical unit of flying is called a squadron, and the squadron is expected to be self-sufficient. So each pilot is not only fulfilling flying duties, but you can pick up other skills that you can bring to other jobs in the future, such as... I was a scheduler, so I had to learn how to manage 35 different people's schedules, um, and I was kind of heading up the team lead for that. Additionally, now I'm a flight commander, which means I take care of people underneath me and help them achieve their own career goals uh, and kind of vector them for the future. So it's not all flying related. It Granted, it is the majority but there are other things that you'll be expected to do in a fighter squadron as well. When you're studying something you're passionate about, it's not a chore. And the skills you are building when you're outside of the aircraft can be applied to so many jobs. Now let's talk about being a woman in aviation. The number of female pilots has increased over the last few decades, but the percentage remains low with less than 10% of all FAA certified pilots being women. What advice do you have for girls interested in entering the field of aviation? So there's a lot of advice I could give to young girls, but I'll try to keep it short. My main one is you have to put yourself out there and try. Trying is huge. Uh, you, it's a way to get your foot in the door and you don't know until you try. Additionally, expect failure. So failure is not a bad thing. It usually has a negative connotation but the aviation community expects you to fail and then they expect you to try again. So it's important to put yourself out there and to keep trying no matter how hard it is because you're gonna be challenged over and over. My point for all that is don't let it stop you. And then lastly, uh, the Air Force is inclusive. So you being the unique person you are could be the thing that the Air Force needs uh, and you don't know until you give it a shot. It's so true, you'll never know unless you try. As a woman in engineering, I've often found myself as the solo female in the room, but as you pointed out, unique opinions and voices and different types of mindsets are exactly what most companies are looking for. And honestly, they need it to iterate their designs and to advance their technology. Now, looking beyond your current role at the US Air Force, what direction do you see your career headed in the future? So looking beyond the U.S. Air Force into what direction I see my career moving, 
honestly, I expect to myself to stay in the aviation community, just not in the military capacity. So I'm thinking one of two routes. One, I could go commercial. So that's like when you fly on Delta or American Airlines or United. Um, the Air Force has paid for my pilot wings. And that's initially something that in the private sector would cost maybe over $200,000 to get. The military paid for that for me. Uh, I paid it back with service, but it was service well spent. Additionally, I could go in the small private sector, so I could fly tiny planes, uh, anything from flying celebrities around or something a little bit more fun, like doing flight tours in Hawaii with small aircraft. So there are a lot of different opportunities out there. And then thirdly, if I didn't go aviation for whatever reason, there are many different jobs out there, such as consulting or maybe managing people. These are all skills that the Air Force has taught me how to do. Uh, so there are a lot of opportunities out there for everyone, even after the Air Force. Commercial airline pilot, small aircraft tours of Hawaii, or flying celebrities? Those all sound like really exciting potential opportunities on the horizon. Speaking of flying to exciting places, do you have a favorite or most memorable flight as a pilot? So my favorite flight as a pilot by far has been flying in Alaska, specifically around Denali Mountain. Denali Mountain is the highest mountain in the Northern America. So it sits at 22,000 feet. And on a clear, beautiful day, I got to fly all over it and all around it, uh, seeing glaciers up close and personal, moose, uh, ravines. Even in the hottest months of summer up here in Alaska, when on the ground temperatures can be up to 80 degrees, Denali Mountain will be covered in snow. And it's truly an amazing thing to see. So it's something I'll always remember, and it's really unique, uh, even in the Air Force, getting to fly around something that cool. I'm an adventurer myself, and seeing Alaska's Denali Mountain was one of my most memorable moments when I was hiking the wilderness. I can only imagine how beautiful the Alaskan landscape must have been from the air. So just for fun, though, can you tell us about your pilot call sign or nickname? So my call sign is nails and typically in a fighter squadron everyone gets a call sign that is individual to themselves the call sign is granted after you've proven yourself among your fellow aviators that you are a combat deployable pilot and that you're no longer in training so when you're brand new fresh coming into the squadron uh, you're unnamed and then eventually once you complete that combat deployable training the squadron takes the time out of their days outside a normal work day and gives you a call sign. Um, it usually stands for something. It usually has something to do with your personality or something you've done with the jet. It's a lighthearted way to bring people into the community and make them feel uh, unique, but also included. It really helps strengthen those bonds. And as far as the meaning, if you join the Air Force and become a pilot, maybe then I'll tell you. I guess we'll have to keep wondering how you got the call sign of nails. I wonder what my call sign would be if I were an Air Force pilot. Hmm. Okay, before we sign off, can you give the students one takeaway thought to leave with? So one takeaway thought I can leave you guys with is don't limit yourself. Any dreams you may have, go for it. Even if you're scared, even if you're uncertain, it's worth it in the end. Trust me, when I was young, and even now sometimes, I might be afraid, but you still do it, and through it, you grow, and you learn, and you ultimately become a better person. The Air Force is a great way to push yourself, and the Air Force takes care of their own. So if you've ever thought, maybe I could do it, even if you've ever thought, hey, that's not for me, try it. You might be surprised. Absolutely. Never limit yourself. I never would have summited Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest peak in Africa, if I hadn't pushed myself physically and mentally beyond what I perceived as my limits. It's outside of our comfort zones that we learn and grow the most. So remember, the only true limit is your imagination. So reach high. Captain Never, 
Thank you for joining us today. It's been so much fun learning about your career as a fighter jet pilot. Thank you, Tamara. It was great being here. And thank you all the students for listening and taking the time to listen to me today. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys out there in the Air Force. Speaking of cool jobs in the Air Force, let's watch this brief video to see some more. Make sure you check out the Air Force and Space Force online and follow them on social media to keep up with all the amazing things they're doing. Thank you for tuning in today. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel in the description below and follow us on social media to get updates about new episodes. You won't want to miss any of them. Plus, you'll get access to fun weekly content for students and teachers such as STEM facts for students, classroom tips for teachers, and so much more. And don't forget to check out the full library of episodes available on demand right here. Each one has an NGSS and Castle Aligned lesson plan for teachers to use in the classroom. With your parents' permission, tell us how you were inspired today by tagging us at USA Science Fest, hashtag XM, and of course, at the real Tamara Robertson. Keep up with me through social media and YouTube, as well as join me and the rest of the Seekers of Science as we tackle real-world problems with real-world science and scientists, one comic issue at a time. I had a blast being your host today, but don't sign off just yet. You'll want to stick around through the end of this video for a fun trivia game that you can do in the classroom or at home. Have fun and good luck!